Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on Code.org, Unit 5, Lesson 10, Part 4. It tells us to run this program, watch the code run, and carefully read each individual part of the program. And then it gives us some bullet points to discuss with a partner. Let's go ahead and run the app. Alright, by default we had small selected. We can see the image of a pug and it tells us that this dog is called a pug. Down below, it gives us the console log and we can see that the small dogs were listed. And if I flip through this and click medium, we can see that the medium dogs were listed. And we have an updated image of the animal and the dog name. And if we click large, we see that again. The console log printed out the large dogs. We see an update to the dog image and its name. If we look through the instructions here, it doesn't tell us that we need to do any type of editing to this code. It just wants us to run this and see how it works. And at first glance, there's really a lot here and it can be confusing. So I'm gonna do my best to just try and talk through the code. Let me go ahead and throw up a graphic so that you can see all of the code on the screen at once. Let's go ahead and collapse the instructions here. And we'll pull this back down just so we can see more of the code. The first thing that we see within the code is that it creates three variables. The first one is called dog names. The next one is called dog height. And the last one is called dog images. And it's pulling some information from a table. Where's this information coming from? Well, if you remember the previous lesson, we worked with tables and data sets. So if I click the data tab on the top left corner of the screen, it shows us that we have a table called dogs. If I click on that, we can see a table and within it is a lot of information that's stored. Some of the things that we're pulling from this table, as we saw on the other screen, is the name, the max height, and the image that's stored over here. So it's pulling all that information. When we get down to line seven in the code, it says it's creating the first of two lists. The first one is for dog names and on line eight, it's for dog images. And so this will populate based upon selection in the code. Then we see this function call called list setup. And if we scroll through this, we can see all the way at the bottom a function that calls two other functions. And that can be kind of confusing. But if we break it down, hopefully this won't be as bad as it looks. The first one is the function call for filter. So let's scroll back up in our code. And we can see that this is the beginning of that function. The first thing it does is it clears out the filter list in the event that it is populated from other selections. It clears the list for dog names and for dog images. The next thing that this function does is it looks to get a local variable that they call dog size. And what it's doing is it's pulling the text from the app. So we have three choices, small, medium, and large. Now that it's done that, it's going to go look through that table that we had before, and it's looking for different conditions based upon our selection in the list. So within this for loop, we have the var i set at zero. It then runs through the entire list, and as long as the variable is less than the length of our list, it'll run the for loop, and then as soon as it gets to the end of the list, it's going to stop. The first thing that we see within this for loop is an if condition. The first if condition is looking at the dog height is at the index dog's height. Is it less than 16? And is the dog size that's selected over here small? They both have to be true here. If it does, it's going to go ahead and update our filtered list at the top with dog names and dog images. If that's not true, it's going to look at the next thing, the else if. It's going to look to see if the dog height at that specific index is greater than or equal to 16 and less than 24 and if the dog size selected in the app is medium if it is it's going to go ahead and populate those dogs within the filtered list with the names and the images if neither of those are true then it's going to go to the if else and it's going to look again to the dog height is that greater than or equal to 24 and is the dog size equal to large and if those two conditions are met, it's going to go ahead and filter the list with those dogs. It then goes to the console log, which is down below, and prints dog size. It adds this text and then prints out the filtered dog names. So now that we've looked at that function, let's go back down. The next part of this function is the update screen call. So if we look here, we can see that it creates a random index number between zero and the end of the list. 
We do the minus one so that it goes to the last index entry as the max number. And once it pulls that random dog, it prints out the name at that index number and the image at that index number. And it sets that text over here. The only other part of this app that we didn't talk about is the on event. And we can see that it's set up to change. And what that does is just runs the function for list setup, which then goes back through all the way to the bottom, runs the filter, and then updates the screen.